So friends, uh, uh, welcome to this uh, test run of the Swayam Prabha Channel 20 for NEP PDP National Education Policy 2020 Professional Development Program for implementation of NEP for university and college teachers. This is just a trial run. And our colleagues uh, from IGNO and our regional center colleagues, uh, uh, I'm just alerting them that uh, uh, please do put up questions so that we also respond. This is just a trial run and the, the presentation would also be changed when the final um, uh, delivery of uh, the NEP through the SOIM platform starts. SOIM Vertical 2 protected platform when it will start. The fourth or fifth day of the program will be fourth day, in fact, is the discussion forum of the six days program. And the fifth day is the live conferencing to Prabha Channel 20. And that will also be recorded. And you could also uh, uh, send your queries so that uh, we also respond from our side. This is a platform which we are using, which has presentation as well as a chart system uh, so that you can uh, read your questions and we would try to respond. And this is for one hour and our actual delivery will be longer time than this. So friends, uh, this is a presentation on, uh, I must also note that we have 14 units in English and Hindi on uh, 14 areas of NEP, important areas, and almost 31 videos uh, contributed nationally by experts, uh, um, including all institutional heads of the regulators and so on and so forth. Those are the resources, followed by a discussion forum, and finally, followed by this uh, Swayam Prabha uh, interactive uh, presentation, uh, which the participants will be joining the Swayam platform through the Samarth portal of registration. So all these resources are available. So what I'll be presenting, in fact, all the resource persons will be joining in later, they will be presenting, either we use a common a PowerPoint or they could do their own PowerPoints, what uh, uh, we'll be presenting, uh, there's some very foundational fundamental issues and concerns within uh, uh, what the NEP 2020s has been talking about. Otherwise, all the details are available in those printed units, both English and Hindi, as well as uh, uh, the, the 31 or plus videos that are already available that will be uploaded. They have been uploaded to this one platform. So let me proceed with this uh, business session of this presentation. So friends, welcome again to NEP 2020 and some of the foundational issues of uh, education reforms. That, that you see on your screen is, the, is, is, is basically the, the, the important uh, uh, recommendations of the NEP 2020, starting with a structural change, five years of schooling, three years and three years, of uh, schooling stays and four plus four plus one, which he, either you put senior secondary as a junior college or uh, as a senior secondary and up to research degree program. So plus one, the research degree program. So the NEP 2020 talks about the uniqueness of each child that uh, uh, the teachers must address one individual student as an individual student and deal with the learning styles and uh, um, attitude and uh, study approaches and so on and so forth of each child. And that also brings in uniqueness as well as diversity, as well as inclusiveness and flexibility. These are all built into that the definition of uniqueness. Foundational literacy and numeracy is very important, including digital literacy. It talks about like um, many countries in the world who have uh, put in or based their education system on their culture, history and tradition, art and so on and so forth. So in our case, the indigenous knowledge, the Bharati Agyana Parampara should also be brought to the fore of the curriculum and teaching learning methodologies. I repeat, curriculum and teaching learning methodologies. And if they can continue to do that for the assessment strategy and the additional resources, including technology enabled learning, that will be appreciated. Flexibility, because there will be multiple entry and exit, I'll talk about that briefly. Multidisciplinarity, already we have been teaching uh, through interdisciplinary approaches multilingualism uh, including the mother tongue or the local dialects and the regional languages and the Rajvasa Hindi there should be and Urdu also they should Sanskrit they should also come to the fore integrated because the entire plot integrated because of the vocational and uh, and uh, general higher education there should be horizontal vertical mobility number one and integrated because 
that there should be um, holistic development of the individual student or individual child and the holistic would include i'll discuss that in a, another powerpoint this must be grounded in practice because the nep talks about almost a 50 50 formulation that uh, enough of theory the 50 percent could be largely the disciplinary core and the rest would be application in context the context wherever the students and teachers are the application would include both the activities and engagement assignments and so on and so forth and internship which is becoming compulsory part of uh, each uh, 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 degree or diploma or certificate program. Social and life skills, employability skills must be built into because uh, the four-year undergraduate program, almost 40 credits is being devoted to this. Technology-enabled learning, which will be specifically for teaching learning, language and disability, planning and management, and continuing professional development. The curriculum has to be diverse, inclusive, as well as contextual. Cross-border education delivery talks about and including cross-institutional and cross-border credit transfer. So therefore, the equivalency needs to be established that uh, we will just touch upon distance online learning, which is leading to almost blended learning, national higher education qualifications framework, which is under discussion, and about regulation, it talks about integrity, transparency, and efficiency, rather than the way that was going on so far. So holistic development of each uh, uh, student, it talks about uh, that we must uh, take care within the curriculum, the physical, intellectual, emotional, social, ethical, and moral development, irrespective of our discipline or irrespective of the level that we are teaching. It talks about Indian culture and values. And uh, like any other country, some of the finest uh, education systems in the world, they are based on their own research, their own culture, their own context, and so on and so forth. So activities are designed and student engagement is built into based on their own context and their own experiences. So the indigenous artifacts and knowledge and research findings, they must be built into the activities and therefore it becomes more indigenous. Then we have scientific discoveries available in this country starting from 5,000 plus years. And those in mathematics and science, astronomy, as you know, uh, and culture, art and culture, all these should be brought before. And history is an important consideration within that. Indian languages, it talks about why not to teach even professional education like medicine, dentistry, um, engineering and technology, pharmaceutical architecture and so on and so forth in one's own mother tongue. It is very much possible not necessarily English. Insofar as literature in English is available, if they get translated, translation is going on in a massive scale in the country. All this literature, the, those who, which are copyrighted free, uh, so uh, the teachers and students will be in a position to deal with their teaching learning in their own local regional language. And especially at the school stage, it must be the local dialect. Dialect simply means even below language. I mean, the spoken language within the family and within the community. Art and culture should be brought forward to our teaching and learning, scientific discoveries, and lifestyle and worldview, which is in a yogic shiksha, yoga shiksha, and uh, the, 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 the sanatan, and uh, uh, the kinds of things that we have been talking about in this country, that uh, the lifestyle should be indigenous-based lifestyle, uh, which we are facing today, lifestyle problems, and the worldview that we have, the sanatan worldview, that Basudeva Kutumbakam, that we, the whole world is a family to all of us. Those kinds of considerations, which are very, very spiritual, nothing religious in this, they are very spiritual and they should form part of our educational discourse. It talks about uh, increasing gross enrollment ratio of 50% by 2035. And uh, so therefore, the face-to-face -face education system also has to take the uh, load and more so open and distance learning has to share the larger role insofar as increase in growth and development ratio is concerned. Equity in achievement of learning outcomes based on facilitating each individual child to achieve the same learning outcome because even twins learn very differently. Twins have their own different learning styles. So they perceive differently and uh, they proceed differently. Their pace of learning is very different. Their approach to learning is different and therefore Equity has to be considered not only in terms of quality, but also addressing individual students' ability, di diversified ability to proceed the way they would like to proceed. And therefore, teachers need to facilitate that. And that will be called as an inclusive classroom. 
So inclusive education would be irrespective of gender, caste, status and disability, they need to be taken into consideration and therefore enrichment of the learning environment. It talks about institutional restructuring besides that uh, I noted the numbers at the beginning starting from school to university research. It talks about three kinds of institutions gradually meaning thereby that the single mode, um, um, it may not be single mode, I would simply say that the standalone institutions, almost 12,000 plus that the NEP has noted down, um, in teacher education is the largest number, the standalone institutions needs to gradually transform into multidisciplinary institutions. So teaching universities, universities will be focusing mainly on undergraduate and postgraduate teaching, but also backed up by research. Research universities, like Indian Institute of Science, which was research oriented, it came down to undergraduate teaching to translate research into practice. So research universities were an example of Indian Institute of Science, Bengaluru, autonomous colleges for postgraduate pro undergraduate programs and student research need to be built into that. This is not faculty research, but student research. So four year undergraduate almost 40 credits, one fourth equivalent is devoted to research and internship. Flexibility and multidisciplinarity. The students must be provided with the flexibility in choice of programs and courses. There must be flexibility in learning pathways. Multidisciplinary institutions, that, uh, that simply means standalone institutions will be converting to multidisciplinary institutions gradually. And therefore, multidisciplinary programs would also be coming in. I'll talk about that in the next PowerPoint about multidisciplinarity. Art education, it suggests two very foundational changes across the board. All disciplines and especially in higher education that we are discussing, art education has to be foundational common to all the discipline areas including professional areas, engineering, uh, medicine, uh, technology, IT and so on and so forth. Foundational art education or foundational arts course has to be common to all uh, which intends to develop a well-rounded, good, value-based individuals, positive oriented individuals for the community, society and for the nation. It also talks about vocational education and training or for that matter, skilling and employability to be built into all kinds of education, irrespective of the discipline that we have been talking about. So these two are compulsory across the board and which should be compulsory. So therefore, it talks about uh, both undergraduate, postgraduate programs, the flexible curricular structure, integration of science, technology, engineering, art and mathematics. Instead of STEM, it is talking about STEAM because art is getting into that because without art education or arts education, liberal arts education, the education is not complete even if it is science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Industry academia linkages, especially for the design and development of the curriculum which are skill-based and employability oriented. Multiple entry and exit, I will explain in the next PowerPoint uh, the way National Higher Education Qualifications is talking about. Community engagement and service, which is compulsory. A portion of the credit hours would be devoted to community work. Research and intensive, as I said, almost one fourth of the credit hours in a four year undergraduate program is devoted to this, which is compulsory across the board. Across the board means all disciplines at all levels. Environment and value based education, including global warming and uh, uh, green energy and so on and so forth, they must form the part of right from school education to college and university. Indian language, culture and art, as I have already said, they must find a place within maybe in multidisciplinary giving a chance to the st students that they can take up uh, language, culture and art courses and music and so on and so forth from other disciplines while studying one's own discipline. Skill courses, in future there is, there is more possibility that there will be course-based registration and therefore the students will be uh, selecting their courses from multiple institutions. So course skill-based courses and course-based registration would be the train for the future and therefore there will be multidisciplinary and holistic education. Holistic means all the, the, the boxes that you see all put together would be meant as holistic. Multidisciplinary simple because the students will be given the, the choice that they can take up courses of cert, up to certain credits other than one's own discipline core from the other disciplines and uh, the largest uh, 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 credit hours from one discipline that any institution would have offered uh, would obviously uh, 
provide the degree, certificate, diploma or degree. So uh, it talks about 21st century skills openly. We have been talking about this earlier, but now the NEP 2020 talks about openly about this, that this 21st century skills must be focused in all the disciplines while teaching their discipline core, as well as taking courses from other disciplines as multidisciplinary communication skills, independent learning skills, thinking skills, critical thinking, problem solving, creativity, responsibility and ethical skills, leadership skills, digital literacy skills, knowledge management skills, and self-directed learning, self-regulated learning, including happiness skills. And it talks about uh, uh, extensively on happiness skills, how it should be built in. And some of the state governments, some of the universities have also developed their happiness courses and built into their curriculum structure. So it talks about uh, the national skill qualifications framework, which was earlier 10 levels. Now I'm told that it has been brought down to eight levels. And uh, um, I will show the 10 levels as well as eight levels equivalency. So the national higher education qualifications framework, which will determine the graduate attributes and learning outcomes across disciplines at various levels and uh, 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 different years of study or semesters for each discipline. Um, first year, second year, third year, fourth year of an undergraduate program. I will talk about that in the next PowerPoint, that the revised eight levels of national skills qualification framework. So therefore, national higher education qualifications framework, which is under discussion, which is going to be finalized very soon. They had 10 levels and they need to comply with the eight levels. So levels 4.5 to 6 is undergraduate, level 7 postgraduate, level 8 research. It talks about the process. I will show one sample of the National Higher Education Qualifications Framework, professional knowledge, subject and profession. It talks about within that the specialization, the depth, the multidisciplinarity, the breadth, and the concrete to abstract segment to cumulative, the kinds of approach that one has to, take, to talk about, and the complexity of knowledge within that discipline core. It also talks about professional skills, core skills, and the final responsibility when one takes up a, 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 a job in the world of work, so at any level. So what would be that responsibility based on all these professional knowledge, professional skills, and core skills? So NAP 2020 talks about emphatically that 19 to 24 age group, right now 5% are Students are only exposed to vocational education. South Korea, 96%. Germany, 75%. USA, 52%. That's what the NEP notes down. It might have changed after that. So therefore, this uh, percentage needs to increase. And 19 to 24, which is almost the last year of the schooling and uh, the, the uh, four years of undergraduate program, vocational education is to be built into seriously and therefore to enhance the skilling and employability of the graduates. Each child, one vocational area in the school they have to take. There should be integration of school vocational education with higher education vocational education. And in the schools, there should be skill labs, collaboration with uh, it, uh, with uh, 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 ITIs. Uh, I'm sorry, it is not ETs, it is ITIs. ITIs, polytechnics and industries. By 2025, 50% of the school and higher education students must be exposed to vocational education, which is the SDG 4.4. Uh, SDG is uh, development, sustainable development goal 4.4. Higher education institutions, especially the four-year undergraduate program, must be uh, uh, vocational oriented. There can be certificate and vocational soft skills also available. Hand in hand, there should be academic capacity building and vocational capacity building. There are two ways to do this. One is to take up vocational courses of one's own choice. And the second one is that the academic courses must be applied in context and therefore they should be skill oriented. Loka Vidya, uh, it talks about Loka Vidya, that is uh, Loka Vidya, people's knowledge, that is indigenous vocational education. They should be, we had very strong indigenous vocational education even today, based on which all these artifacts and architecture have been created, they, including mathematics, arithmetic, and so on and so on. Say, for instance, uh, Bharatiya Ganit, which is a local bit there, I would consider, and because mathematics is applied to almost all kinds of activities that we do, mathematics and arithmetic are the base. So, local should be uh, brought to the, for, to the curriculum. 
National Skill Qualifications Framework, uh, expansion of each discipline, vocation and discipline, profession. So vocation and profession need to be built into the framework, which is now eight level framework instead of 10. There should be recognition of prior learning almost 50-50, uh, if it is possible, 50% of credit exemption based on the prior uh, skilling experience or learning experience and 50% additional credits could lead to a degree. This is based on international level organization, international standard classification of occupations that the NEP has talked about. This is your higher education qualifications framework, friends. So level 5 and now it is level 4.5 that uh, uh, this is revised undergraduate certificate of 40 credits then one can do an additional credit to get into the world of work with an internship level 5 which was earlier level 6 uh, is undergraduate diploma this is a two years program of 80 credits then one has to do certain credits again to go to the world of work one can come back to complete the third year which is 5.5 equivalent to nsqf complete another 40 credits um, totaling 120 credits and can also leave and uh, be farmer for instance or uh, be archaeology uh, integrated teacher education program be a be a uh, integrated program all will be falling under uh, level uh, third level that is 5.5 level 6 is bachelor's four year honors bachelor's degree 160 credits that completes the undergraduate program the first year Master's program could be called a PG diploma with additional 40 and the second year could be a one year for the four year undergraduate those who have completed leading to 80 credits and level seven is the a, a level eight is the doctoral program. So instead of level 10 that will be level eight. So what is the interpretation of national education qualifications frame uh, 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 national higher education qualifications framework compatible with national skill qualifications framework. It talks about two things. It talks about knowledge and skills, both disciplinary and interdisciplinary. In any discipline that you are teaching, it talks about generic learning outcomes. And what will be the generic learning outcomes? 4.5 to 8 revised, for instance. It talks about knowledge, skills, application, generic learning outcomes, values, and employability. So generic learning outcomes would include problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, communication, analytical reasoning, research skills, coordination, collaboration, leadership, learning to learn skills, digital literacy, multicultural competency, value inculcation, autonomy and accountability, environmental awareness and community engagement. This is one descriptor from the National Higher Education Qualifications Framework. On the left hand side is the learning outcomes that are specific to disciplinary interdisciplinary areas of learning and right hand side the graduate, uh, graduates should be able to demonstrate the acquisition of A, a comprehensive knowledge and coherent understanding, B, procedural knowledge required for that, C, the skills in areas related to specialization, and finally, capacity to extrapolate from what has been learned and apply acquired competencies in new, unfamiliar context, and so on and so forth. This is just one explanation of the descriptor of the National Higher Education Qualifications Framework and uh, these would be transformed into what is called learning outcomes and graduate attributes would also be built into this. So this is an explanation of the four-year undergraduate program of 160 credit disciplinary interdisciplinary core, disciplinary interdisciplinary elective, skill enhancement ability and vocational, value addition, field project internship apprenticeship community engagement and research and advanced discipline courses, almost 40 credit equivalents to research and, uh, and uh, internship. So uh, this is 160 credits. The University of Delhi, for instance, has gone for 172 credits. But these areas of concern or intervention or areas of study remain the same. And uh, right hand side, you see 80 credits of a two year master's program, which can be one year postgraduate diploma and one year actual master's program. If one is three years undergraduate, of four years undergraduate respectively. So friends, the UGC, the University Grants Commission has already notified, issued uh, uh, quite a few notifications and a few are in the pipeline. Guidelines for multiple entry and exit, UGC Economic Bank of Credits, guidelines for internationalization, guidelines for apprenticeship or internship, Institutional Development Plan 2020, that uh, each institution is developing their five-year plan, 
National Higher Education Qualifications Framework, which is under discussion, and the ODL Online Learning Regulations Amendment 2022. So friends, what is coming up, this is a graphic representation of what the NEP is talking about, that the credit hours should be distributed depending on the discipline and the professor who is teaching into three areas. That some of the credit hours could be resource-based learning, which could be called self-paced learning, learning by self. Some of the skill, hands-on activities, engagement in context could be face-to-face -face context. Some of the credits will be going there. And some of the collaborative engagement, doing collaborative projects, including portfolio cases, problem-based, project-based, could be online collaborative learning. So self-learning, face-to-face and online, that is the kind of blending that the NEP is talking about. And right now, almost 40 credits in, 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 in a program of study one can take, especially in an undergraduate program, that one can take from the national platform called SOAM. So that simply means 60% is uh, teaching face-to-face -face within the campus and 40% one can take from SOAM. So already the blending has already been suggested. Some of the institutions are already doing this blending. But that blending needs to be extended irrespective of whether one is teaching face-to-face, -face, distance online or blended. Self-paced learning, self-learning, face-to-face, largely hands-on, online collaborative learning, doing projects together individually and together. This is a formulation that is coming up in uh, reforms in pedagogy and curriculum design. Left hand side, you see that all these areas that we need to consider while developing a program blueprint or concept mapping, including your needs analysis, national and regional developmental needs, human resource requirements, global developments, faculty expertise, research and development, indigenous knowledge base, Varati, Gyana Parampara, and learner's profile, and so on and so forth. That leads to a uh, concept mapping or, or a program blueprint and the, the, the program blueprint will be translated into learning outcomes and uh, learning outcomes would be indicating the kinds of learning activities that the students will be engaged with and formative and summative assessment that will be actually assessing the learning outcomes vis-a-vis -vis those learning activities. And while doing the program blueprint, multidisciplinary, multiple entry and exits need to be considered Discipline, interdiscipline, skill-based, social and life skills, vocational, job-related and professional skills need to be built into irrespective of the discipline that one is teaching. This is a consideration that you could, uh, a formulation that you could consider based on those derivations, graduate attributes, learning outcomes, existing learning experiences, based on these modular course-based, credit-based, MAPED-based courses could be mapped based means the concept mapping based courses could be modules could be developed and the learning resources including 21st century skills metacognitive learning and so on and so forth the authentic tasks to engage so it talks about 50 50 formulation 50 percent discipline core and 50 percent engaging students in authentic tasks engaging students in the world of work case studies workshops extended contract programs portfolios internships and so on and so forth and finally, one has to develop an assessment rubric, which is not like an earlier teacher mat test, but which has to be authentic, comprehensive, and continuous. It talks about three kinds of, I'll talk about that in assessment uh, after a while. So therefore, these four areas in a curriculum design would assume significance. Your curriculum mapping, your graduate attributes and learning outcomes derived from the curriculum mapping, the activities that you will design for the students to engage with uh, teachers and students to achieve those learning outcomes and authentic tasks, especially authentic assessment, which will be assessing the achievement of those learning outcomes. So therefore, it talks about uh, learning outcome one, activities, assessment one, learning outcome two, activities, assessment two, and so on and so forth. This is one representation of that, what this is a collection of the research findings that uh, what you could do starting from a knowledge understanding level up to a final creativity application and creativity level and the constructivist level. Constructivism would simply mean that each student would engage as per one's own ability and choice into tasks and context, the way suitable for oneself, one's own learning style and so on and so forth and achieve higher order cognitive learning, higher order meta learning. So starting with the a knowledge could be multiple choice tests, understanding through oral examination, application through case studies, analysis through course essay, 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 assessment or internship, 
creativity could be project based learning, problem based learning, case studies and constructivist learning would be portfolios. It talks about extensively about portfolios including e-portfolios. Portfolios should form an integral part of any program of study that one is teaching at any level. It talks about digital technologies or um, information communication technologies or technology enabled learning in these five important areas of intervention. That uh, technology must, must facilitate access to quality education. It must uh, provide for quality of teaching and learning. It, it, it must increase quality of teaching and learning. It must be integrated into teaching and learning. Rather than being supplementary or complementary, it should be integrated. Technology would not simply mean a web-based learning or internet-based learning. It could mean audiovisual ads and audio and video programs, radio and television to the web-based learning. All these are within the kitty or the basket of technology and our learning. Equity and inclusion, the technology must address the special educational needs and disability. The technology must facilitate continuing professional development uh, of teachers for the whole lifetime. Improving educational planning and administration, including developing uh, management information system or uh, an enterprise resource planning ERP or any kind of network and database and management and so on and so forth. It talks about innovative assessment, three kinds of assessment it talks about emphatically, though these were known earlier, but the NEP 2020 says that this must be specifically designed. There should be continuous assessment summative uh, sorry there should be continuous assessment formative this should be called assessment for learning there should also be end program or end semester or end module uh, test which could be called summative which will be assessment of learning but what it emphasizes more is about assessment as learning that facilitating students to undertake activities and tasks and face certain assessment strategies that they have to say doing a portfolio for instance so that they develop they handle their own learning and they develop their self-regulated learning meaning thereby they will be handling and monitoring and managing their own learning including management of time for instance so this is called an assessment as learning so NEP 2020 talks about bringing in in a large scale assessment as learning while teaching learning is going on for the entire semester or the entire year or entire program of study and in between there will be formative assessment and at the end of a semester or a year there should also be a summative assessment these are the kinds of assessment that you could consider teachers could consider self-assessment should also be done peer assessment it talks about teacher assessment Digital basis talks about simulation and learning analytics. They will be facilitating the teachers and students to, to, to reflect more on their learning and to design better activities, improved activities, diversified activities for students to engage with and learn more in terms of quantity as well as quality. Faculty excellence it talks about. It talks about three things. It talks about many, but these three things are very important. Continuing professional development. That technology should also facilitate this. Scholarship of teaching or teaching excellence. This is coming to the fore elsewhere in the world. Scholarship of teaching and learning has assumed considerable importance. That would simply mean the pedagogy of discipline teaching and researching the discipline pedagogy. I repeat, because in our country, because of the British influence, the British would give more importance to curriculum rather than pedagogy. The non-British European countries, they would give more importance to pedagogy or didactics than curricula. Since we have been influenced by the British tradition, we, we have been giving more importance to, school, uh, to, to curriculum rather than pedagogy. What is coming up is that the pedagogy of the discipline, that each discipline must design and develop its own pedagogy at different levels. And also contribute in terms of research to discipline pedagogy. For instance, Anybody who is publishing based on discipline pedagogy, right now it is not counted towards API and therefore to CES. Whereas in my open university, this is the case, this is being considered. So therefore NEP is talking about and therefore UGC is also working on this, that discipline pedagogy, teachers must be engaged within their, their own discipline, how to 
teach and learn, facilitate learning within the discipline. And they should also engage in researching in their discipline pedagogy besides researching in, in their core discipline. And that should also be considered towards uh, any kind of formulation for facilitating students' academic promotion, development, and so on and so forth. Finally, it talks about professional learning trajectory that uh, resource-based, credit-based, network-based, technology-enabled uh, 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 professional development strategies facilitating students uh, in a flexible manner to take a professional development as for their own need and choice. And there should be a larger network and basket of resources should be available for the whole lifetime. So it goes beyond professional development to include professional learning and therefore professionalization. I must distinguish, distinguish two factors over here. In um, our teaching, learning teaching as a profession, professionalism is very strong and professionalization later on is very weak. And discipline like law, like lawyers, for instance, their professionalism may be so, so and so, but they are so, and uh, their, their professional learning is very strong or professionalization is very strong. So therefore, it talks about professionalism and professionalization. Joining this together, a professional learning trajectory as a lifelong learning professional development for the teachers it talks about. Accreditation regulation, it, it says that Higher Education Commission of India will be apex. There will be standard setting bodies below that, assessment and accrediting body, and there will be funding financing body. Um, the, the regulators today, including UGC, they might take a different shape when this uh, Higher Education Commission bill, uh, which is under preparation any time in the parliament, it may be uh, uh, passed. When this comes up, then all this new formulation it talks about will be coming up. So it talks about accreditation and regulation to be as less as possible and more facilitation should be done uh, for standard setting, curriculum design, uh, quality assurance, and so on and so forth. And it talks about excellence in research and it talks about creating a national research foundation um, um, uh, nationally, which will also be a funding agency for research in the country across all disciplines. So friends, thank you very much. I have completed my presentation. If there will be any questions, mm -hmm. we'll be very glad to respond to your questions. Yeah, we'll be sending this presentation to you. Uh, we will be improving this presentation in the future because many other resource persons will join in to make presentations from time to time at different bases of teachers who will be getting admitted. But we will immediately email the presentation to all our regional center colleagues. R.C. Bijapur has asked, prior learning includes self-acquired knowledge without any formal education or guide or rules. Of course, it will include that. But the standards and the and the indicators that will be set up based on certain formulations of RPL, because RPL formulation is going on. So UGC is coming up, we should be the skills ministry, uh, national skill qualifications framework and national higher education qualifications framework. They will bring up the recognition of prior learning formulation, which will include uh, informal learning also, that anybody with informal learning can pass that uh, uh, test then would be accredited for. So that would simply mean that almost 80% of the level force, which is in the own organized sector, they would appear this test and come up for uh, 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 taking up courses uh, in the uh, regular face-to-face -face distance online or blended mode at different levels, starting from schooling up to university and research. Meaning thereby, for instance, at IGNO, as you are aware, I must also declare, because this has already been declared, that uh, uh, the, the ITIs, Polytechnics, um, Pradhan Mantri Kausal Kendra, and so on and so forth, especially ITIs and Polytechnics, and especially also in the different sector, those who have got their experience based on vocational skills, the skills that they are doing, almost 50% of the skills will be accredited, meaning thereby, the 50% credit exemption will be given by IGNO and 50% a content that IGNO will provide towards an undergraduate degree. So that would simply mean 50% of credits will be recognized as prior learning. Here it is skill based and even informal learning could also be brought in because recognition of prior learning will not distinguish or will not discriminate. It will certainly distinguish 
but it will not discriminate uh, between an informal learning and formal hands-on learning or formal learning. So therefore, RPL would include all of these. And new form lessons are coming up. Ignu R.C. Jorhat has asked, NEP is suggesting autonomous colleges. How about the quality assurance when different colleges will have different standards? Of course, different colleges will have different standards. Uh, what uh, I feel, I'm, I'm not pretty sure, I cannot commit, but I can express what uh, I think, that there should be a stagger, there should be a discriminatory policy towards quality assurance, that those institutions w which are at the lowest level would be done hand-holding to come up a little bit, those who are at the middle level will be little, little less, and those who are at the high level would be facilitated still less. So that means more facilitation should be done for those, for those, for those who, who, for those who have uh, 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 low level or whatever the definition of low level based on the National Accreditation Assessment Council or any other for National Board of Accreditation or any formulation, uh, I think that kind of uh, a staggered and discriminatory policy should be at place to do hand holding and based on that funding should be made available. So the quality uh, standards would differ, obviously they would differ, there will be institutional differences and this will of course as you have rightly said this will be more visible in the individual autonomous colleges. But since they will be given autonomy, they will also have the autonomy as well as accountability to enhance their standards. Enhancing standard would simply mean for me enhancing the standard of the teachers, enhancing the standard of teaching learning process and the assessment strategies. Okay, another question is, will there be one research foundation to all disciplines? That's what is proposed. Um, the discipline-wise, the research uh, uh, um, like um, UGC funding, ICSR funding, CSIR funding, IA, Indian uh, Agriculture Research funding, Council funding, IARC funding, and so on and so forth, um, uh, they obviously they would continue. But they, 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 there will be a National Resource Foundation which will take care of the research, uh, uh, fundamental research and patenting in the country and which will also be funding the other funding agencies to further fund. Uh, this is my understanding unless we have the formulation in place. Another question is how and who will assess individual self-acquired knowledge? Individual self-acquired knowledge, there will be standardized testing and assessment procedure based on the RPL formulation, recognition of prior learning formulation across different disciplines, across discipline uh, professional areas, across dif different vocational job areas and so on and so forth. So anybody, everybody is free to join in just like uh, IGNO was giving a chance, any school dropout can join in, do a bridge course and complete our undergraduate program. So everybody will be given a chance, there will be, nobody will be deprived uh, for that. So the test will be standardized, everybody is welcome. The question is from uh, under the NEP, will, will, it be, will it be their greater regulation or greater self-management of educational system? I think, I think uh, this is a very tricky issue. The NEP is talking about, I have been a regulator myself, the, the NEP is talking about less regulation and more quality. So there will be a light uh, regulation but tight quality assurance mechanism. So that needs to be defined further. We are not as of now very sure that how light will that regulation be and uh, how tight that quality assurance mechanism. But for sure, I can, I can uh, at least submit at this point of time that the NAC procedure or the NBA procedure would have drastic transformation and change to bring in process intervention into teaching and learning and quality assurance, one. And two, that all the regulatory bodies have been proposed to be standard setting bodies. So once they set standards, the regulation would be based on those standards. That is of now that uh, once the document formulation comes up, I think these are the guidelines that will provide uh, the base for the formulation of those uh, uh, regulations because those will be regulations coming up. R.C. Patna is asking what way are the reforms going to impact the overall quality of education and higher education? Sorry, uh, what? Uh... Uh, what what way are the reforms going to impact the overall quality of education? 
You see, in the institutional ranking internationally, whether it is QS or Times Higher Education or Shanghai ranking, which are the most important rankings in the world, that uh, we are not able to come up uh, um, in the 100 category. Even 200, 250 now, IISC and a few IITs have come up in the, in the 2022 ranking, that is QS ranking that is available to us. So the National Higher Education Ranking Qualification is also based on inter international ranking standards. I'm very surprised to see because almost um, um, uh, 15, 16 years, 17 years, almost uh, 20 times I have uh, visited China, for instance, some uh, uh, as visiting professor and otherwise, 15, 16 years back, they were much behind us, I must admit. But today, China is neck to neck to US in so far as intellectual property, patenting, scientific research, research output is concerned. So therefore, even if their language is Mandarin and they have a lot of problems in English. So therefore, the first impact would be that we would be competing internationally in so far as uh, our standard quality and therefore ranking is concerned. And ranking is based on international ranking standards rather than our indigenous or internal ranking standards, point number one. Point number two, that there will be overall quality insofar as holistic education is concerned. Physical, mental, emotional, uh, social, ethical development, environmental, and so on and so forth is concerned. Number three, that the student would be able to expand one's own horizon of understanding as well as uh, uh, one's own employability skills by multidisciplinary education by taking courses from other disciplines. Number four, it talks about, I, I recall, my, I'm not sure whether I should say that, but there's nothing wrong saying that. We are in public domain, by the way. So my son was studying in the four-year undergraduate program, for instance, in University of Delhi earlier, which was withdrawn as three years. The fourth year was devoted to two semesters, one semester equivalent to social and life skills and happiness skills, and another semester credit hours were devoted to research skills. Those have been significantly brought forward. So therefore, a graduate today uh, with this new system would be coming up with holistic skills, holistic social and life skills, and holistic employability skills. Both are required. Employability skill is very low, and holistic skill is almost negligent today. Those would be significant benefits. And the final benefit that I can think of quickly right now is that from the schooling stage, the research, investigation, critical thinking, so the research skills would be forming part of compulsory part of the senior secondary or the junior college education. And this will be coming up up to undergraduate and postgraduate, especially undergraduate level, almost 40 credit equivalent is devoted to one fourth credit hours is devoted to research and research intensive skills. I think these are the benefits which will be contributing to overall impact of uh, uh, especially higher education towards uh, employability, happiness, happy living, social harmony, um, uh, community engagement, uh, environmental protection, and uh, finally contributing to national development and national gross domestic product, or maybe per capita income if you would like to say that. Any toll-free number this time? At this time, no, but uh, uh, Dr. Mathley, mm -hmm. later on, later on, uh, we will provide a toll-free number also beside the chart. This is a good suggestion. We will submit to our uh, uh, Swayam Prabha uh, colleagues and Swayam colleagues if they could also build that in. This is a good suggestion. Any date for implementation at IGNO level? IGNO has already started implementing NEP 2020, by the way. Multidisciplinarity, my colleagues who are also listening will be later on presenting. Uh, Professor Jha must be, have joined in, Professor uh, um, C.B. must have joined in, so Professor C.B. Sama, um, Professor uh, Madam Sina, Director of Social Science must have joined in in this program. And quite a, a few other colleagues who have, the, Professor Parar is with me and the other colleagues who are also listening to, they will also vouch for that. We, for the last almost one and a half years, two years, we have seriously worked towards multidisciplinary education, multiple entry and exit, academic bank of credits, recognition of prior learning, if uh, Mahapadriji Provide Chancellor is listening to, because this Agnibir, as well as the National Skill Development Qualifications uh, that um, ministry project of recognition of prior learning, almost 50-50 formulation with IITs and polytechnics, um, I will request him to make also a presentation intervention sometime in the NAP. 
and his video is about uh, uh, assessment strategies but we can also have a video based on rpl from him which will be contribute 10 to 15 minutes video all these uh, um, technology enabled learning all these uh, um, we have progressed a lot in so far as igno is concerned and quite i know quite a few other institutions in the country they have progressed including iits iims and quite a few but many have not as much. I, I will not say in public domain, but they are still preparing towards vis -a -vis the institutional development plan, which is common to everybody. Please do have a look at the institutional development plan document of UGC, which is under circulation and discussion also. And we at IGNO, we have already done last year institutional development plan for the five years uh, with, with budgeting and requirements and so on and, and so forth committing that quantity and quality of teaching and learning and including employability and placement and so on and so forth. So I think IGNO for almost one and a half years, uh, I must submit that uh, 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 we have evidence that we have progressed in these areas. These are most important areas of NAP 2020. And we have um, in the Academic Council, it was passed in the Board of Management, it was passed based on the Institutional Development Plan, SICA developed this and gradually, the NEP implementation team, other than these uh, 15 lakh teacher training chaired by uh, Professor Das, Pro Vice Chancellor, uh, we have completed in these areas data are available, data have been submitted to the ministry for consideration and uh, as evidence. These are, uh, but that's all fine. But uh, important is that we have implemented. Our colleagues at headquarters across all disciplines, they are conscious of this and they have progressed. Uh, um, in, in certain uh, variable percentages in their own disciplines in designing of this multidisciplinary entry and exit, RPL, credit-based, uh, 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 course-based registration, skill-based courses, and so on and so forth. So there is a request that whether written material be shared before presentation so that self-learning is ensured. Uh, well, uh, the, the SOEM platform will have 14 units in English and Hindi. They have been written by national experts. 31 plus videos are available, including all those institutional heads of AICTE and many uh, NAC chairman and so on and so forth. Dr. Kasturi Rangan's video, all these are part of this kitty. So um, the teachers will have enough of these resources available to study print as well as video before they come for discussion forum and the final day will be so Prabha based uh, teleconferencing and the discussion forum test 30 percent and the final test 70 percent multiple choice question based so these resources are available other than the these um, quite a few resources are available on NEP because uh, many institutions have developed their own institutional development plan which talks about reforms in curriculum and so on and so forth, vocationalization, employability, skilling, uh, those could also be tapped by teachers uh, to study, but they are available in their respective uh, public domains, uh, if they are available. YouTube videos are also available, but uh, um, um, to my knowledge, some of the best practices of implementation of NAP 2020, we are still searching for. I think gradually they will be coming up. I think from IGNO, we should also do some best practices and put in public domain in YouTube so that others could also learn. Does the NEP 2020 recognize the community knowledge? It talks about community engagement. So community engagement will be local, local language, local dialects, local artifacts, lo local artifacts, artifacts, uh, I, I'm sure you appreciate, artifacts would include they are, they are lifestyle, uh, the instruments they use, uh, um, you know, ghar ki khana banana se leke, battan se leke, tamam chijay, jo aapko archaeology mein, excavation mein milta hai. So, ye tamam chijay, uh, it talks about community engagement and it talks about community engagement more to increase community cohesiveness and community uh, social life and uh, happy life. So to increase the happiness index and to reduce the mental tension and uh, to take care of mental health. It, uh, it has already provided certain credits to a compulsory community engagement. Same question, will the FLM available online? But they will be available on the SOIM platform. So once you uh, uh, register, once you register, uh, I will encourage all colleagues to register. Once you register through the through the summer platform specially meant for this, 
Once you register, you get into Swayam and you can download those print and video. You can keep yourself. You can circulate widely as much as possible. You can put your in YouTube as much as you like. And this must have wider circulation. They will be available. But you have to register and come in. Otherwise, if you write us personally, we can email you. Any mechanism for providing academic credits for creating intellectual property? Well, well uh, it talks about uh, quite a few things, NEP. This is a very excellent question. It talks about that uh, the, the, there must be a reward system for good teaching. There must be a reward system for good research. Good research which are foundational, fundamental, basic research and which will be leading towards patenting. So intellectual property and patenting should be rewarded. And the National Research Foundation should take care of that. It talks about that very extensively. So we look forward to that this will be worked out in the new formulation and regulation. How quality can be ensured in diversified education system in India? Well, quality is, uh, 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 is what the teachers and students think is quality. There will be quality indicators, but their perception of quality based on that same indicator would also vary. So therefore, it needs continuing engagement, continuing dialogue and continuing professional development and engagement in discipline research so that their conception of quality increases. It also uh, includes access to and study up some of the good practices and best practices available in this country, even outside the country in respective teaching, learning, assessment and technology areas. So therefore, I think um, there will be difference in quality Perception, the quality standards would remain constant. So therefore, across the board, that the teachers and students and the management of the, uh, of the university college and institution, they should uh, proceed towards uh, uh, enhancing the quality. But quality would still remain as teachers and students and educational administrators understand. Another question, will you provide FTP certificate for the participants? We had clarified that there will be an automate, those who will be completing with 50% pass score, they will be automatically issued a digital certificate. We will not provide a physical certificate, but digital signed certificate will be provided. And as per our understanding, since we are an UGC HRDC equivalent uh, uh, stride and IGNO is given UGC HRDC equivalency, and uh, the UGC letter says that yes, we are, this program is equivalent to UGC HRDC programs. So therefore, I have no hesitation to say that this is also equally applicable to like any HRDC short term six days program or 12 days refresher program equivalent to um, contributing to API and CS. Okay, how NEP is facilitating technology to enable teaching and learning and that should be at the last. Um, um, NEP is talking extensively about this. It doesn't specifically per se talks about open and distance learning, but it talks about blended learning. So in future, all higher education institutions would be getting into blended teaching and learning. Point number one, blending would be a blending of self-learning face-to-face -face hands on online collaborative learning, depending on uh, what percentage that institution and professors themselves, they have the autonomy to like to, the institution would decide the kind of mix they would like to do, point number one. Point number two, in terms of technology enabled learning, it talks about that all these, starting from audio visual aids and audio and video up to web-based learning, they should be brought forward and, and social technologies and networks, like for instance, Google Groups, Facebook, interaction, Twitter interaction, and so on and so forth, they must be brought forward. Like for instance, we had experimented uh, blogging as an individual reflection and wiki and a collective reflection. This must be, and strong research evidence today is available. For the last two, three years, I was going through significant amount of research which are supporting these rather than complex technologies and networks. So therefore, these must be integrated into, including a mobile SMS, for instance, or a, or a, a WhatsApp group uh, uh, interaction, which will be contributing to academic development. Point number two. Point number three, it talks about bringing in machine learning, internet of things, um, and learning analytics and artificial intelligence. Uh, Professor Paraj is sitting with me, so he's more conversant with the with this than myself. So machine learning, artificial intelligence, which I don't understand much, but I'm just speaking out to you. 
um, it's not my fault, but I will get into this. So machine learning, artificial intelligence, internet of things, learning analytics, more specifically it talks about these four areas which should be brought into academic teaching and learning. And we know certain interpretations of these, but they need to be worked out and need to form an integral part of the curriculum design and pedagogy design. There's a question if we have time. Uh, there will be two levels of outcome of this PTP. One is total number of registration and other one is total number of teachers successfully completing the FTP. So what is the question? So you are giving best wishes to us or what? Yes. So those will be admitting and those will be completing. If I can interpret that question of yours, that those will get admitted and the, uh, if all cannot complete, those who cannot complete, they can re-enter in the next batch available and can complete the test and get the certificate. And uh, how many times? We have not limited. As many times that they are not able to complete, they could drop in and also complete uh, the program and take the certificate. Is the same provision of certificate of participation or certificate of completion? Cert certificate of participation and completion? Why not? Rather successful completion? So, friends, thank you very much for an excellent uh, interactive uh, uh, session. Uh, we will uh, repeat this in future. This was a trial run and we will fit, uh, uh, we will repeat and all our colleagues who have joined in they are also uh, listening to this they they could do it much better much differently but this is the procedure that is coming up so thank you very much